Hi again. <laughs> So it's me alone again, as you can see. I took over What's Up Saturday on Saturday on my own, and thank you everyone that joined me to see my sales and see how my sales week was. Ryan, as I said, had something going on Saturday, school related, so he was not able to have any time to join me. And once again, he is teaching today and he is teaching tomorrow, and he didn't go with me on my bins trip last week, so it just so happened that I have a solo bins haul for you guys today. This is actually a double bins haul week. This is like the bin spectacular week because we haven't had the time to crack down on some like informative videos yet and we didn't want to like throw another thrift with us at you guys again because I just don't want to like overdo that. I know that you guys love them and we absolutely love them but I just don't want to like overdo it so we will be doing them. I just want to do them like every single Tuesday. So actually upcoming, I want to let you guys know before we get into this, we are going to be doing Doing an updated bins tips like top 10 bins tips and then we're also going to be doing a new depop video i feel like that is like the most requested video i've been seeing on instagram and also on the comment section is a new or like updated depop video so we have made a depop video in the past that went over a little bit of the history of depop we went over how etsy owns depop now and we went over like how it works how you list and we gave some tips here and there we covered some of the cores and like the styles and trends on depop Depop, but we both had kind of just started Depop in a way. We definitely knew what we were doing, we knew what we were talking about, but we hadn't had as much like practice and we weren't as successful as Ryan is now on Depop. So we do want to do a new Depop video now that Ryan is like a really great Depop seller. So that is coming up. And then like I said, we're also doing a bins tips video, like the do's of the bins, like these are what you should be doing type things. Or like if you're scared to go to the bins, maybe some things to kind of like make it easier and make you less stressed about going because actually I see there's a lot of people that do like fear the bins and I kind of get it because the bins can be a little like daunting and a little scary and for the valentines do not fret we have not forgot about you for both of those videos we plan to do a bonus valentines video I'm thinking that for the bins one the main video is going to be like bins do's and then the valentine video is going to be like bins don'ts so we're going to do like 10 bins tips and eight things to kind of like avoid at the bins or to not overwhelm yourself with the bins. And then the Depop video, we haven't decided how that's going to work yet, but we are going to do some Valentine bonus information with that as well. But like I said, we are not prepared for that today, and we always want to make our informative videos good and planned and scripted and well thought out. So this week, we have a double bins haul week for you guys. Today, it's just me, and I had a freaking fantastic bins trip. Y'all, the amount of bolos in this video is insane. I also spent more than I've ever spent at the bins. The total for this was 178 and like 85 cents. So I was getting close to $200. But when I showed Ryan all this stuff, he was like, oh yeah, there's like not a single thing I would have skipped there. So I got a lot of fantastic stuff to show you guys. And then on Thursday, it is gonna be a bins haul of the two of us. We actually did go yesterday. It wasn't as good as this haul, but it was still pretty good. Our bins are usually usually never like bad. There's definitely been a few times. Yesterday was a little slower than like I said this trip but it's still we still got some good stuff to show you guys. So I have some really good stuff to show you guys today. I should probably stop babbling and I should jump right into it. I didn't get any shoes this day and I got one bag and like two like other miscellaneous pieces so we're gonna start with those unsurprisingly we're gonna move on to pants then which i don't actually have a ton of either then we're gonna move on to like the jackets and the dresses and the sweaters and stuff and that's where the really really good stuff is even though actually the pants are really good too everything's good okay so my first stuff like my miscellaneous stuff i got this hat it's like a wool made in nepal hat with like flower snowflake like details to it i looked up this brand it's called lost horizon Horizons. And the comps actually looked pretty good. Like people were selling these hats for like 30 bucks. So I did pick this up. I don't know. It just felt like really nice wool. So I looked it up and sure enough, it had a little bit of value. And of course it's perfect for the season. So I thought I would grab that. Then I've been trying to not get like blankets or like crochet blankets or whatever anymore because there's too many cute ones and they take up a lot of storage and also like they weigh a good amount. It's kind of expensive to get them, but I could not skip this one. So this is like a fringe like crochet woven blanket. It's much bigger than it looks because I have it all like folded up. It still unfolds one more time, but it's kind of like a throw blanket. 
I thought it was so cute with these like embroidered flower details throughout. I just totally think this is like cottage core. Somebody would have this like on some kind of like nice velvet like floral spring chair or something like that. I don't know. This stuff can do good for me. And actually like Depop does take home. I well take you can list home items and I feel like this could do good on Depop. So I'm gonna try that. It also doesn't like weigh much, so I grabbed that. Then my one bag, I saw this and I was like, oh my gosh, that's so cute. That's so like Y2K. I'm gonna get it no matter what brand it is. And then I looked at it and it actually is a coach bag, which really surprised me. So it's like a tweed wool, like knit little Y2K coach bag. I think this is so so cute and should do so well. It's so trendy and because it's like that wool tweed, it's like perfect for winter. Um, there's like a little bit of wear on the bottom. It's not much. And then the handles are kind of the same thing. I think it's mainly like dust, so I should just like wipe it off better. And the inside's like a couple crumbs here and there, but nothing too bad. But that is adorable. Okay, already on to pants. And starting off with a bang, we have a pair of shorts and these are a goldie. So if you don't know a goldie, that is a total, total bolo. I maybe, I should put the little bolo notebook up in this video every time I say one of the bolos. But yeah, a goldie is a total bolo, very expensive denim brand, and it's very popular as well. So these are just some like black shorts like kind of like splits on the sides and then some light distressing to the pockets these are size 28 and they have a button fly and i was very excited to find those i rarely find a goldie anywhere like consignment stores or anything let alone at the bins then we have one of my favorite pair of Athleta. So these are the Athleta Feralen Cargo Crop. I've had these like two other times and they always sell so well. Size 8. The other two I've had have been in like a pink salmon peach type color but this is like a nice like green army green kind of color. Like I said this style does really well. I think you actually can get these in a non-cropped version too which I've maybe had once but they're from like 2021 and they do so good and y'all know I love Athleta. So when I found that I I was like, yes. Then we have this vintage leather midi like pencil skirt. Another thing you guys know I love, we love the Athleta. We love the J. Crew sweater blazer and city coat. We love vintage wools and gothic. And then we love vintage leather. That's, that's like my go-to bread and butter list. So I don't see leather skirts very often. Also, this leather is super, super nice. And I was almost like not gonna get this because I feel like everyone can agree, like skirts kind of hit or miss, but I'm gonna give it a shot. We'll see if leather skirts can do well. Then this is slightly underwhelming, I guess. I just thought these were cute. So these are Gap and they're boyfriend mid-rise. These are from 2020 and I don't know. I just think they're cute. I just, I think the day before I went to the bins, I sold a pair of Gap jeans. So then I was like, I'm gonna get these. <laughs> okay, so moving on to the like coats, jackets, blazers, sweaters, all the really, really good stuff. One sec, I gotta say something. So I walked into the bins this day and two people that I, I mean, I knew more than two people there, but two people that I like talked to a decent amount were there. And right away, both of them said to me, oh, there's nothing good here today. It is not a good bins day. Ugh, the bins have been bad. And right away, maybe I'll start with that. The first thing that I pick up, like first of everything, is this sweater that is really, really cute. It has like a twist front to it. It's like a V, it's cropped, it looked really trendy, and it felt really nice. And sure enough, it's an Alexander Wang sweater. And I was like, hmm. <laughs> Did I just find like the one like luxury piece? This is a size extra small and it has like this twist front and there's some light pilliness to it. I'm gonna sweater shave it one more time, I think. Alexander Wang at the bins. Now come on now. I was like, okay, okay, I'm not gonna like get too excited yet. Everyone just told me it's not good. Maybe I found like one random good thing, but then like the bins just continued to deliver. So they were really good. I don't... I, mm -hmm. And again, I would say this too. Be sure to go through bins that everyone has already went through. I think like almost everything in this haul came from bins that like everyone had moved away from. Because I just stand at the ones that no one's around and I just like dig all the way to the bottom. 
and that's where a lot of this came from. So next up is this long hooded coat and it snaps at the front. It's like a tunic coat. It's really long. It's like probably mid thigh length. And this is actually cool. So it's a size small cool. Cool lately has been kind of hit or miss for me, but this is a really, really cute style. It's called the Spirit Coat. It has this really soft like fleece lining to the hood. And I just love this length. Like I was kind of surprised that it was cool. It just seems a little bit more like substantial than most of the cool pieces I found find. Then we have another bougie luxury brand. So this is just like a plain gray sweater and it honestly is probably a men's, which is fitting because I think we actually talked about this brand on our men's, whatever the last men's bolo video we did was. This is Paul Smith. This is actually PS by Paul Smith. It's a medium. And like I said, it's just like a gray crew neck sweater. And Paul Smith makes all kinds of fun like sweaters and dress shirts and blazers and stuff. It's 80% wool or else it's like nylon. This I also need to sweater shave before I take some pictures of it. It's just a nice staple like gray sweater. Then we have a Lululemon, which in the bins we have not been finding Lulu for a long time. I don't know why, but this is like a moto style Lulu jacket and it's in like the classic like Luan or whatever they call it. I kind of like how these zippers match as they're like the white metal and the size. The struggle begins. What is the size of this Lululemon? That is a good question. Okay, so I'm assuming the size of this is like some kind of small. So like a six maybe or something, but I will have to get measurements. I cannot find the size right now, but Lulu in the bins. I will take it, especially a jacket. Then actually this was the second thing I found. So that's when I was like, okay. I think it's a good, I think it's gonna be a good bins day. I don't care what anyone else says. <laughs> this is a really, really adorable, crazily distressed sweater. Like a sleeve is like ripped or a, a shoulder is like ripped open. There's the distressing all throughout. The bottom hem on the sleeves and the bottom are like chewed and loose. And this is actually Lovers and Friends, which is a brand that I, for the most part, am not a big fan of, but this piece, however, I am obsessed with. It's also still on Revolve right now for like $170. This is a size small, but it's very oversized. And actually like a ton of bloggers have worn this as well. I, oh, oh. So cute, and it's actually like really soft too. Okay, so mixed in here, obviously, like there are some of like the regular type of stuff I buy, like some vintage wools and stuff. But don't worry, there's many, many more amazing, fantastic luxury and bolo finds left. So this is just a vintage wool blend blazer, but how freaking adorable is this? It's a size eight so i think it actually is like an oversized fit it has i don't know if she had like a belt that got caught or something but it has a little hole at the back of the lining there but obviously when it's worn nobody knows even when it's hanging you can't notice but i thought this like red and black buffalo check was so adorable and again it's like perfect for fall or winter speaking of vintage it's perfect for winter this is actually a talbot's piece which I don't pick up too often. This is a size medium and it's made in the USA. And this is a snowflake printed Sherpa quarter zip pullover. It's in really, really, really good condition for like its age. It's still fluffy, it's still soft. There's no like nothing stuck to it. it Honestly, probably was hardly ever worn, but of course this is like perfect for the season. I know that like Urban Outfitters and stuff sell these like printed Sherpas now for men or women. It's kind of like trendy to have that like vintage grandma, like tourist Sherpa <laughs> thing nowadays. This is another vintage piece. Well, vintage is in like 2012, so not like vintage, but old. This is Banana Republic and it's an Italian wool size zero blazer. But this color I thought was just so so pretty and so cute. It's like pumpkin orange and it does have some light discoloration, like really light up here. And then kind of at the armholes, I think there's discoloration, but you know how sometimes like white lining just layers up on itself and it looks discolored? That could be the situation here. From holiday 2012, but I just like couldn't pass this up. It also has those like elbow patch circles. 
And I love this like, what do they call that? The like speckled kind of look to it. What's that called? Oh my gosh, that word. I know that word. It's just like escaping me right now. I can't remember. Okay, so next up is a vintage J. Crew piece and this is 100% wool. And some of the vintage wool J. Crew sweaters can do really well. This is in really, really, really good shape for its age as well. The only issue is a small pin, or not pinhole but like a small hole on the back hem. Otherwise, it is in great shape. There's no shrinking and it's still really like no pilling even. So somebody with all this vintage stuff took like really good care of their clothes. Then we have an Everlane piece. This was one of the last things I found and I was like just cherry on top, topping it off with an Everlane sweater. This is called like the soft cotton square sweater. It's a size large too, so that's great. But I love this color. It's like a darker orange and it's really like chunky. It's kind of heavy. And I like the ribbing details to the bottoms and the neck. Can't beat Everlane sweaters. I feel like Everlane, it's like the shoes and the sweaters and maybe some jackets are like the best things you can find. I would say denim, but I have like four or five pair of Everlane jeans that will not move at all, which is like, shocking another vintage piece this is by liz baker and it's a size medium one of the vintage people at our bins like walked up and grabbed this out of my cart and i was like okay and he's like hmm that's a cool sweater oh liz baker yeah and i was like yeah <laughs> it's lit bro like i don't huh <laughs> i don't know okay um anyways this is a like fall leaf printed sweater cardigan come on now come on now again this is just so cute i didn't care the brand i don't like is liz baker like the name and like vintage cardigans i don't know i'm not a vintage person but i thought this was so cute and i think it'll do really well and i'm gonna put it on depop ebay well i'm gonna put it everywhere i don't know why i always say that okay do we do like the really good no let's save some of those i mean all this is like really good oh i have two more pair of pants these are J brand, which I like never pick up, but these are like neoprene, like scuba material. So I'm gonna give them a shot just cause they're like unique. But if they don't sell, obviously like a consignment store will take them. They're size 29 and they're called the Odyssey. I have not looked these up at all yet. So I'm kind of interested to see anything about them. This is a pair of Levi's, one of my favorite styles to get. The wedgie straight and they're a size 32, which is fantastic. So these are just straight leg and they're ultra high rise. That's what the wedgie straight means. They're button fly. Rib cage and wedgie are the two key words, honestly, nowadays with Levi's, but there's like the patch. And of course, since they're wedgie, they are the high quality denim. I was pumped to find these. I think a bunch of people had skipped them and I'm like, thank you because I want them. Then we have a Sundance dress that is gorgeous. This is Sundance size eight. And that is like the older now Sundance label because the new one is like a teal blue. But this is freaking adorable. It gives me very like free people or anthro kind of vibes. It has like embroidered throughout and like lace ladder details and this big like floral embroidery at the chest area. And then also the hem is like this uneven kind of like handkerchief looking hem. Adorable. So exciting. I love Sundance. Along with the Sundance, there was like this pile of the Sundance and a couple other things. And I could tell they're all from the same woman. This is Garnet Hill size small. And Garnet Hill, I actually do like to sell, especially like certain pieces that are a little more substantial. Like this one. This is a slubbed cotton maxi dress in this like brown color. This is like what the Garnet Hill customer is looking for. So I was excited to find that, especially now that I have like a bigger presence on eBay. I think that that'll do really well. This is an Intimately Free People size medium and this is just like a ribbed kind of like turtleneck thin tee sweater kind of. I think it'll do good because of this like turtleneck and I mean like ribbed stuff is super popular. This was one of the first things I found. It is Tallulah, which is an Aritzia brand, size large. And how freaking cute is this thing? It's just like a t-shirt with graphics all over it, but it has like snakes, Saturn, skull, stars, lightning bolt. It has like all my tattoos. I have a lightning bolt tattoo. I have a skull. I have Saturn. This is really cute. I honestly wish it, if this didn't have such a scoop neck, I would probably keep this. That is so adorable. 
adorable. It also has, what was that? <gasps> a glass of wine. How fun. Then we have another J. Crew piece. This is a J. Crew size two. And this is a tweed pink, like peplum blazer. This is actually like another blogger favorite. I saw a bunch of like bloggery pictures with it, but it has a fringe kind of detail along like the neck and the cuffs. And I think that that is adorable. Hashtag Barbiecore. I've heard that like, we haven't done research for the winter trend report yet, but I have a feeling that like pink is gonna be very heavily present in that. Then we have a big, big bolo. This is Varley. I believe we've had Varley on one of our athletic bolo lists. Varley is a very expensive, very popular, trendy athletic brand. And this is one of their super modern, super popular pieces. It is this half zip collared like sweatshirt. So this is still sold everywhere at full price. So I can't believe I found this. It's a size XL, which is also great, but it's like like ribbed throughout and like I said Ryan found something with this same neck it was like a men's what ASOS or something but this neck I don't know if that has a name this neck shape like V with a box bottom to it is like really popular for some reason I see it used on like all kinds of new pieces of clothing then another bolo but I feel like a lot of people know this one we have rag and bone and I believe this must be like an older rag and bone label but it's handmade in the US and it is a size 4 and this is a really really nice like four pocket blazer with this like trench coat style like whatever these are called <laughs> at the top i like know some of my words and some of my words i have no idea yeah just like a really nice wool blazer and it has this interesting button closure where like both sides are loose like you can pull the buttons through so when you button it shut, at first I thought that the button was like falling off, but it's not. I think it gives you like a little extra room. I don't know. I've just like never seen that. I thought that was kind of cool. Rag and bone in the bins. Sign me up. Another brand that, um, excuse me in the bins, IRO. If you don't know IRO, IRO is very, very, very expensive, especially their jackets. And this is an IRO jacket. So this is like a wool knit jacket with these neoprene panels under the sleeves and to the sides. And then actually the cuff zipper area is leather and so is this collar, I believe. This has one spot right here that I'm just gonna have to list it that way because I actually already did clean this. And then I just have to like sweater shave the armpit areas, but overall it is in great shape. It has some like shoulder padding to it. It's a size 36, which I think is quite small. Like this is an extra small probably, or maybe a small, but I never find IRO. And with the retail price of IRO, to find that in the bins is absolutely insane. Okay, so next up is like an older anthro piece. I probably will just bring this to a consignment store it's sparrow size medium but i don't know it feels almost like it's a wool blend the person cut the label out of it so i'm not sure i do like the colors of it but it is a bit more dated so i will maybe list it for a little but most likely i will consign that then we have a slightly older athleta piece but i've told you many times before and i'll say it again athleta i'm not like too big on the age obviously i'm more excited when it's like a super modern piece but i don't like skip all the old ones. So this is an XL and it's just like a classic hoodie and this really nice like classic athletic material. It has thumb holes, it's full zip, and it's actually in really great shape even though it's an older piece. So something like that I will never skip. Another nice athletic piece, and this is also an XL, so actually maybe it was from the same person. This is a wool blend turtleneck. It's like a classic seamless turtleneck cute and i really like this blue color it's my favorite color then okay when i hold this up like think to yourself what do you think this is because i definitely assumed this was a brand and then it actually was not so does this or does this not look like lily pulitzer like is this a knockoff of lily pulitzer i believe it is this is actually i mean a similar brand though vineyard vines and it's a size six but i don't like ever sell vineyard vines myself anymore but this is like really cute with these like shells all throughout every single thing on here is like a shell and then it has that like bow in the middle i could picture like a lily pulitzer stan looking for this dress definitely it has pockets it is strapless but i also i think at anthro when we went last time have seen that the like mid to that like 2009 2010 strapless dresses are coming back 
at least in anthro. I don't really have any comments on that one. I, I don't have any comments at this time, sorry. So next up is Outdoor Voices. And so there was like, there was the woman with the Sundance and the Garnet Hill and a bunch of like that type of stuff. And then there was one bin that had like the Varley and Outdoor Voices and really good athletic. So like there are many different like kinds of people clothing wise. And luckily I found them all because they all had nice stuff. So Outdoor Voices, this is a size small. And this is apparently one of like the popular Outdoor Voices pieces. It says Outdoor Voices right there. And it's like a tennis skirt mini dress. So it has like a built-in tennis skirt and it's like a polo. I could totally see this being popular right now since like tennis wear is like popular right now. Usually Outdoor Voices has kind of fallen off, but I'm hopeful for that piece. Next up is another Outloader piece and this is size medium. This is that dang, oh my gosh, did I figure out the name? What is it called? What's it called? What's it called? Ugh, I always forget the name of this sweatshirt and I've sold it and had it like 10 quadrillion times so I really need to know what it is. I think it's the coaster. I think that's it. I think it's the coaster, the coaster sweatshirt. As I always say with these things, they're like slightly washed, pilly looking. I gotta go to Athleta and see if that's how they come because they're always like this. I have never had one that is not like this. This is a size medium. It's definitely oversized. These are the ones that are like really stretchy and they feel like pajamas. So you would be so comfortable. This is in like a nice sage green. I love these sweatshirts. They don't usually get like a ton of likes, but they'll just like suddenly sell. Next up is a very similar color. This is an Ann Taylor piece and it's size 10 and it's actually new with tags and it's this really, really adorable blazer. Last fall or winter pastel colored suit sets were super in, so I'm sure that's when this is from. It retailed for $180 and I think it's adorable. I I love selling blazers. As I said in the last, I think in What's Sold Saturday, like mall blazers just do so well. This, now don't chase me with pitchforks, is a Target collaboration. Most Target collaborations are absolutely worthless. Like some have like specific pieces that do good, but for the most part, like H&M ones are good. Uniqlo ones are awful and Target ones are usually awful. But this piece, first off, is adorable. It's this interesting like turtleneck layered v-neck striped balloon sleeve sweater and it is a collab with Victor Glamau. Glamoud? Glamoud? I think he's like an up-and-coming designer so unfortunately I don't know a ton about him but I looked this up and comps, like sold comps on this sweater are like 40 to 50. So I was like, okay, why not then? Like normally I would instantly just skip any Target collab, but the comps aren't lying. Like, might as well. Okay, one of the brands that I love to sell is Zaya. So we have a Zaya size small, and this is just kind of like a ribbed tee. It's kind of all there is to it. Here's the Zaya logo, if you are not familiar. It's like a half moon with kind of like a star in it. Again, I feel like the reselling community is very like split on Zaya. Half of us love it, and the other half absolutely despise it, but I am in the love it camp. This is Ralph Lauren blue label, and this is a size extra small, and how trendy and Y2K and golf couture is this? So it has the polo logo there, and it's like a halter polo top. I think this is so cute, and this will do so well. Then we have another Aritzia t-shirt. So this is by the Aritzia brand Denim Forum. It's a size large, and it says like Sunny Cali on it. I'm sure this won't get me a ton, but anything Aritzia I love to pick up, especially at the bins. This is a vintage piece that is just so cute. It's by a brand called John and Anna which I know nothing about. It's a size large XL, and it is a heart printed, or not printed, heart knit sweater with like bat wing cap sleeves. I love that. How cute. This is a vintage anthro piece, and based on the style, I would usually never, ever, ever grab this, but based on the print, I absolutely did. So it's postmark, which I don't even know the last time I picked up a postmark piece. 
size small, and it is a French bulldog printed top. My family used to have a Boston Terrier, and all of us are obsessed with French bulldogs. They're just so expensive. I mean, I like pugs more, but my mom and dad would love to get a Frenchie. But how cute is this? And there are so many Frenchie lovers out there, I'm sure that this will do great. Then we actually have an Eileen Fisher piece. This is size large, made of Italian yarn. And I usually wouldn't sell Eileen. I actually found a bunch of other Eileen Fisher pieces that I brought to a consignment store. This one I am gonna try to sell. It's a single button, like, duster long cardigan with these two nice pockets at the front. No holes, no pilling, really good shape. It's kind of like a light peach color. I don't think it's showing up too well, but I thought I'd try that. This is with the Garnet Hill and the Sundance. This is soft surroundings, and it's actually a 3X, and this is like a slubbed cotton brown, just kind of like flowy top. I do get soft surroundings in the bins. I don't really thrift it or get it at consignment stores anymore, just because it's kind of dropped off. Next is a super, super cute anthro piece. This is by Moth. <laughs> and it is a size large and it is a cardigan like really really soft knit cardigan and the back is this like flowy cotton metallic striped situation it has like metallic dots throughout and then it's like gray striped i think this piece is adorable also it is so soft what is this so it's like a rayon mix that is like surprisingly soft for just being like rayon and Stuff like that. Then we have a Madewell piece that I think is really cute. This is Madewell and it's oversized extra small. It literally says oversized. And this is like a thick striped shirt. To me, this screams jacket. Like it is quite thick. Like when you get like a good flannel shirt that's like really thick, that's what this is. So I was more than happy to get this. Somebody held it up at the bins and was like, does anyone want this? And everybody said no. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> then we have another Sundance piece that was sitting with the other Sundance piece. This is a size small and it's a silk cotton nylon blend. It's this blue kind of tie-dye-ish, floral-ish print cardigan. I love Sundance. I already said that. Still true. Still true 20 minutes later, I still love Sundance. Then we have another Athleta piece and this is Athleta size small, newer label. And this is that same freaking material as the coaster sweatshirt where it like kind of gives that washed pilly look when you're close up. Otherwise, like it looks fine, but it's still that like pajama soft material. It's a hoodie and it has like a crossover bottom to it. I get so excited to find stuff like this. Then we are down to three pieces left and they're all really good. So this is Lafayette 148 size medium. Nowadays, if it's even slightly interesting or non-boring, I will sell Lafayette myself with the real real being so low on percentages. This is a linen indigo colored shirt. And actually, you're supposed to unbutton the two bottom buttons and tie it, because I found the model picture. I think this is really cute. And I mean, I just like list my Lafayette at like 50 bucks, which is like a huge amount off of re that retail at like $400 or something. So you just post it for 50 bucks and honestly, Usually my Lafayette actually will sell. This is absolutely stunning. This is the Jet Set Diaries, TJD. It is actually new without tag and it's a size small. And this is a flutter sleeve gold long maxi like bridesmaids dress. This is beautiful. I think this is also still on Revolve. If you don't know the Jet Set Diaries, they're kind of like one of those like Revolve-y brands where that's like the main place you see it but it is very expensive and sometimes they've had it like they've had like one free people collaboration this is not one of those i have had one of those it's a very expensive brand and last is a very ryan type find so we found another piece of rising international which is that brand that makes these like hippie kind of like embroidered patchwork 
hoodies and he always wants to find them and suddenly I find them all the time. <laughs> so this is an XL and it's 100% cotton and it's exactly what the Rising International customer is looking for. These like embroidered patch hoodies. So you know what? I'll take it. You can list those for like 100 bucks apparently. Anyways, as usual when I do these alone, I'm getting like such a dry throat. So I am going to go drink my coffee now. But I hope that you guys enjoyed my haul. I thought that this was a pretty good haul. NGL. I think that this was a pretty good haul. Every single thing in here, I'm like really excited about and really excited about listing, which is like the best kind of bins haul because that really like gets you into gear to like, okay, I want to take pictures. I want to get these posted because I know they're going to sell quick. I think that this was worth $178. Obviously, along with this stuff, I usually get about a full TJ Maxx bag of stuff to consign to, which which was true this day. So the 178 didn't just go to this. So I will see you guys on Thursday with Ryan to do the exact same thing that we just did right now. And then I will see you guys on Saturday for What's Sold Saturday, of course. And then like I said, next week will probably be the Bins Tips video. And then the week after that, I don't know. <laughs> That's too far for me. So I will see you guys then. Let me know below in the comments what your favorite item was that I found. I feel like it's kind of hard to pick in this batch, but I will see you guys on Thursday. Goodbye.